Romancing the Dungeon is intended for mature audiences, as this show contains adult themes. But like, not those kind of adult themes. Just some sensitive stuff that some audience members may find upsetting. Content warnings for specific episodes can be found in episode descriptions. You're listening to Romancing the Dungeon, a soft core D&D podcast about heroes navigating their daily lives while looking for love in a world full of peril, monsters and heartbreakers. Hey there, lovely, <laughs> miserable, how's it been all right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you taking the first steps? Just <laughs> solving your problems, at least your dating ones. <laughs> Welcome to DX. Rejected daters. My name. <laughs> My name. My name is Roz. <laughs> I'm a founder, and I'm a CEO, I love wizards, remember, you are loved, <laughs> you're loved, <laughs> and I, I'm drunk, <laughs> what does your happy ever after look like? My happy ever after is being with the one I love. That's <laughs> very nice. I guess my happy ever after is that everyone I know and care about is happy. <laughs> Honestly, uh, at this point, my happy ever after is... You're a best friend. What? My happy ever after... Oh, I missed it. Is... Not being attacked such a good person. by random uh, <laughs> monsters anywhere I go, and maybe not dying. Anywhere. Oh, I don't want you to die. <laughs> uh, well, not, not again, anyway. No, that, that's what I'm saying. That's it's what a bit I, tired. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you get armor? I'm gonna buy you armor for Xmas. <laughs> okay, Ross. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I just like a simple life. A lodge that overlooks a small town where I might run, you know, a little store with people around me who love me. Oh, that's, that's so quaint. <sighs> oh, I love the four of you so much. You're my best friends. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> Shots. <laughs> <laughs> Major Arcana, Tarot, my allies, my swords and shields, my brothers and sisters, my family. I have called you here for this reading as an opportunity far beyond my authority and position as the Empress has made itself known to me. And today I bring it to you. I have received a request, a target that requires your utmost attention, your devoted discretion, and above all else, your esteemed consideration. A client has placed a mark upon the King of Galeshire's head. can feel the trepidation, but trust we are safe. We are secure. Your words here on this very night are hidden and private upon my honor, upon the devil's head and the son's life. Nothing spoken shall leave this room. My brothers and sisters, 
I come to you to heed your word, to listen to your wisdom, to beseech your judgment and to hear your voice. This is no mere task. This job, this mission, this request, this is something that each of us must weigh upon our hearts. His Majesty, the leader of Galeshire is by no means a meagre target. His death, his murder, would cause untold strife across the kingdom and even the world itself. The alliance between Visage and Gaelchar could be damaged beyond repair, the power and balance left by no heir, and everything in between could destabilize the entire kingdom. <laughs> I'm certain the devil's advocate, our dear son, would beseech you to consider the weight of those consequences. The hardship that would befall the country and her people. He would ask you to anchor yourself to those consequences. But I ask you to cast aside those chains for just one moment. Where he points to struggle, I offer opportunity. We, all of us, would see to the fall of a king, and there is no doubt in my mind or heart that we would be rife to benefit from it. Our organization could grow exponentially. We would have a hand in the most powerful kingdom in the world. Our network, our connections, your allies would see untold prosperity. Power and riches beyond their expectations. <laughs> Trivial things. Petty things. I can almost hear the mechanizations of the sun's thoughts as he decries my paltry, unscrupulous suggestions. These things are beneath us. These things are unworthy of the tarot, of our time and of our talent. But I am not here to insult you, brothers and sisters. He would be misjudging me and my reasonings because it is neither power nor money I offer you, my family. This is one of those few moments in history where a very few have the power to make real and effective change for the many. I offer you the chance to tip the scale of an entire nation, to turn a page on a whole kingdom's history, to thrust open the book and plunge the fate of the region into the unknown. You have that power. You have that chance. You and I alone. Let us together make history our own and write this next chapter. I, the Empress, cast my vote. The King of Galeshire should die. Acquaintances, compatriots, others. It is a pleasure to be here in such tremendous company as yours. A sordid shame that the business at hand is so divisive, but nevertheless, there's always something to be learned about your bedfellows and seeing how they respond to a contentious issue. Whatever way the coin lands, I expect that all of us will leave knowing a little bit more of each other, for better or worse. The gravity of the issue at hand here cannot be overstated. That the Empress would speak to it so eloquently is testimony to that fact. And yet, how simple a thing to speak of the death of one man, the demise of one country. All gathered here know that we cannot possibly address this matter in such simple terms. 
For the threads of fate which stem from every one of us are infinitely complex in how they intertwine and entangle us all. Much of our work has its roots in these threads, in learning to extricate and weave them, in manipulating them in ways such that fate itself could scarcely differentiate our work from its own. This process is one of surgical precision. And my family, there are precious few surgeries performed with blunt instruments. None of you, not a single person assembled here today, is a blunt instrument. No, we are keen blades and subtle medicines, one and all. This contract would not treat us as such. We perform our work using methods and means befitting each of us, have done so for years or decades, or longer still. Each of us here have worked too hard and too long shaping this world in ways suited to our interests to simply take a match to it, to set it all ablaze. Death. Would you see the lands fallow and burned, scoured of the ingredients used in your works? The Magician. How many great, arcane, academic, and scientific works have been lost to the destructive machinations of war? The Lovers. What would become of your troop when your marks lie bleeding on battlefields around Galeshire and Visage? Justice. Do you truly believe that those of us here would best serve a country and its people? We who bow to the whims of none but ourselves. And temperance. You know well that those most vulnerable would worse suffer the hardships of any conflict. The idea that taking this contract would better serve any of our ambitions, never mind a shared ambition of this organization, rings inherently false. I argue here before you that it actively undermines the works hitherto wrought by all present, and moreover that it besmirches the freedoms afforded by membership in this organization entirely. Presently, we stand astride these lands, enacting our will as we see fit. This would see us as shepherds to a panicked, addled flock. I ask now of each of you that you join me in refuting this contract for nobody's benefit but our own. Enough. You have heard the arguments put forward by the son, the devil's advocate, and myself, your empress. Cast your vote into the fire. Now. We are well into the Masks of Winter Banquet, and you are polishing off your desserts. There's that that energy that's been kind of cracking away all day. You can almost reach out and touch it. People are in great spirits, uh, and not just because of the free-flowing booze, but just the merriment and that sense of community. As you are polishing off dessert, Dreyfus wobbles up onto his feet. He's too fruit trays in. He takes one of the blocks of ice and his hand is slightly encased in it. And he's kind of, <laughs> oh, uh, Mary. Uh, <laughs> and he takes a knife and he kind of like, cling, like, cling, cling, cling. He's like, clinging <laughs> the, the knife against the ice. Uh, you, uh, I'm a man of few words. I'm a man of action. You all saw me take out that Draco Hydra. <laughs> and the crowd is like, woo, you all the Draco Hydra. Draco, Draco, no, she better do <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he just got, like, he kind of sways a little bit. You know, my Drew, she loved this holiday. She loved her kingdom. She loved her home. She loved me. Big old, big old Dreyfus. She did, you know, in her honor, as is tradition, I'll hear your Xmas wishes. And depending on my mood, well, well we might grant a few this evening. And I hear, someone grant my wish, I want to, I want to wish the king live forever. Oh, uh, it's uh, granted, granted, I'm immortal now. Uh, oh, that's how it works. <laughs> um, I'm married. Okay. 
And she uh, kind of jerks him back down. Yes, if any of you would like to share your uh, Xmas wish, perhaps our our heroes have a wish that they'd like to share. Fia? Oh, uh, yeah, kind of on the spot. Um, I guess I just, I, I wish for my friends to have a happy Xmas. <laughs> <laughs> you can flick it. Oh god, if this goes wrong, we're just all gonna have a shit time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna flip a D2. Be careful of the Dread Tower. Got a 20. Okay. So yeah, you'll have a very happy Xmas. Let's we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it has to come true. <laughs> Ivan, maybe you've uh, an older wish. I have spent some time in the city and I see that there is a. <clears throat> Represented amongst uh, many different temples and temples, and uh, there are a lot of gods that are represented. But there is one god I find that has not been represented in this city. So I would like to see, a, at the very least, a, a grotto or a shrine or something uh, built to the goddess Adonna. Give me a coin toss. No. No, I know. Oh, no. We, we'll look into that. See if there's any funding uh, that we might be able to divert from the temples. She knows you tried. Yeah. You tried. Oh. I just build it myself. No. Oh, no. Hephaestus. Maybe. Uh... Don't know. Could you guys just like send my family some sort of official royal statement that I am a fucking hero? Mm. And that one we actually might be able to make happen. So why don't you give us... A, yeah, just put, out, put your wish out there. No! <laughs> we'll get around to it eventually, no. perhaps. No! It'll be forever! Very busy. I'm sure word has spread through the papers about you. Again. Again? <laughs> AJ. They stopped reading those years ago. <laughs> they had to. <laughs> oh. I'd like to wish that everyone else's wishes come true. What a selfless man. <laughs> that wasn't my wish until a second ago and I saw the loophole and I dove through it. <laughs> you your head cut off. <laughs> I was like, tighten that loophole. <laughs> oh, oh, isn't, isn't that absolutely precious? Um, again, let, let's put it out there and we'll all wish on your wish. Jesus. Yay! Hey, hey, hey. Happy like, Xmas! <laughs> Some guy just got Spider-Man powers. <laughs> oh, I want that! <laughs> it's too late! <laughs> Three people with a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, the, the, like, again, with the four of you kind of leading the, the way of it, a few more people kind of stand up and really barge in, I wish for dancing! Uh, and again, she kind of starts doing that kind of, that nana shuffle. And she's kind of popping in and Marik holds it. And it's signaling because I'm going to kind of escort her away. And uh, one of the brothers uh, of Chaff is like, okay, Rudy. And it's just, and she's now got him and she's dancing with him. My wish came true. <laughs> <laughs> and he's now like awkwardly swaying back and forth. Dreyfus is like, do you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's time for the music, I think, uh, Mary. So get the old band going there. You see that towards the end of the ballroom, there is a small little platform of stage. And there is a whole bunch of musicians and they just start playing. Blessed son, honoured empress, thank you for your proposals. I have taken great care in deliberating both sides, and after much analysis, I am ready to formally cast my vote. As anointed of death, I do feel a degree of devotion to my title, and in this instance, I feel that my personal and duty-bound goals align. Now, I won't keep your suspense... The timing is opportune. We are in a position where we can increase our influence in the land. The undead has already weakened the country's foundations, and the whispers on the vines are that the common people's faith in the king is shaken. A chance like this is rare in that this contract, if enacted right, could set us up as a more overt force. To be able to walk in the sun and the shadow as one. To be able to be known to the world in the brilliance that I... 
in the brilliance that we are. Now, I know some members of this council might find my decision self-serving, even callous perhaps, but this is not for a mere fresh batch of subjects. The sum purports that we should decline this contract as a mercy to the populace, to keep us from causing greater suffering. However, I believe his reasoning is flawed. The king has no heir. That is the fact. Do we truly believe that at this point he is likely to have one if we wait? I don't believe so. So to me, this country is destined to fall into a succession strife. There's no doubt. So, do we trigger this now, whilst we're in a poised position to benefit, or do we wait? Do we wait for half of this council's members to fall from their prime and for us all to be swept away as another victim of this tragedy? I, for one, will not let myself be put on the back foot in order to satiate some members of this council's pious facades. I implore the council to consider the wisdom that my title denotes. It propositions us for this exact danger the dangers of stagnation and of complacency, and it asks us to heed the benefits that change can bring. So, I say, taught the threat. Prepare the shears and let this king taste our sweet belladonna kiss. I bow to the empress in this matter. I believe that we should take this contract and that the king should die. Mary kind of elbows Dreyfus the, the dance. The, the 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 tune, folks, the the, the big one, and his, uh, Dreyfus kind of like holds a hand out to Lady Wolver the third. She daintily takes it and he glides her towards the the dance floor. Bernie, you get the nod from uh, Lady Wilver the third to have the heroes join. She uh, pushes herself or tries to push herself out from the table and then looks at Ivan and is like, "Can you can you give me a hand, please?" Yes, all right. Uh, we're, we're going dancing. Oh, okay. Uh, well, up you get. Come on, everybody. Fia, would you do me the greatest honor and let me have this dance? Um. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's not what like we're supposed to do. We're together. Yeah, we are supposed yeah. to do. It, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Real smooth. Let's go, Bernie. Hefesta, <laughs> <laughs> you can dance with me and not even. She wiggles her fingers at you to take her hand. Waiting for the cue from Lady Wilver the Third, uh, Bernie, you've kind of led the heroes to the edge of the dance floor. You all watch as Marigold's dress, as it sort of follows her. Uh, you do, you see the dress just kind of catch and glance across the floor and ice kind of begins to form and it breaks down and dissipates with the magic. Dreyfus looks absolutely bored out of his head. <laughs> Marigold, on the other hand, looks... Like she's really enjoying this and they are performing it's just a very very simple kind of manoeuvre Dreyfus literally looks like he'd rather be eaten alive by the Draco Hydra whereas Lady Margot Wolver the third has fuck is that a smile she is completely and totally lost in this moment uh, lost in Dreyfus's embrace oh gross and with that she gives you the nod Bernie what? She nods again. <laughs> oh, she's gonna join. <laughs> she's gonna join uh, Hephaestus and I was gonna say Nate. Fucking hell! <laughs> Hephaestus and Ivan's hands together and be like, go. Cool. Hephaestus is very confused because she thought they were being accompanied by Bernie, and so she's like, oh, okay, oh god, all oh, right, and she like very awkwardly doesn't know where to. I just hold my hand. We'll get this over with. Oh. <laughs> and then she shoves. AJ and Fia after them. Just like we practiced. Oh, I didn't practice. 
Yeah, except you didn't practice, and Ivan, you didn't practice, and AJ. I practiced loads. I taught. Oh. Uh, I taught Bernie the stamp before. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. Mm. I practiced and didn't do too well. But you still practiced. That's the important thing. So, out of the four of you that are now going to engage in this ceremonial dance that does sort of officially open the winter's ball, three of you have to pull from the Dread Tower. Uh, because for our finale, we're not just going to be rolling dice. We are stealing, uh, borrowing, inspired by the Dread system. So any of our big interactions, any of our big, what would have been big roles, we are now going to try and resolve using the Dread system. This is going to require Thea, Ivan and Hephaestus to pull from the tower. Okay. Oh, good call. <laughs> Easy peasy. Oh, geez, I don't like the look of that now. It is that situation where you are, all of you, are out of your comfort zone. AJ included. The only difference is AJ is more experienced at being in this type of scenario, maybe not necessarily dancing, uh, but he's seen it. And with his help via and letting AJ take the lead, you are able to follow his moves. Hephaestus and Ivan, it's a bit more free form, <laughs> <laughs> a bit more interpretive. And while you are sort of in rhythm with the two other couples a lot of people are kind of picking up on the fact that you are sort of improving I mean, and there's a, there's a lot more hips and a lot more shoulders <laughs> out of the pair of you you are getting the crowd's attention and, and thankfully people have imbibed quite a bit uh, much to Reedy's efforts. I think in this moment for Hephaesta, in this sort of, she hasn't ever really been this close to Ivan and I think it's kind of really hitting her that this is not neat like he looks different, he acts different, he holds himself different. Like this is, this is like the most intimate she's ever been with Ivan. So this is very strange. I think that's part of what's throwing her off. Why is everyone staring at us? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Marigold is looking with kind of a, oh fuck, uh, look on her face. So she's still smiling, but there is that that sort of lost in the king's eyes is very much now focused on. <laughs> This uh, display in front of her, and she's nodding, and she's oh, lovely. Uh, and the inside, kind of firing her. She's so fired. She's fired. Um, Birdie's at the sidelines cheering. <laughs> and a few people have kind of gathered and are watching, and they're also kind of waiting. And with that, the with the completion of the second set, more couples kind of join another set into it. Dreyfus is kind of now swallowed in the crowd, and the band kind of bring the performance to a very very low slow sort of fade and uh, marigold bows uh, to Dreyfus uh, a very deep extended bow uh, she's kind of holding a hand out and he kisses her hand she kind of turns and she starts, she starts to applaud and the rest of the crowd all kind of started to applaud the band <coughs> it's out of the way uh, done <laughs> Flutes! And he... Uh, someone starts playing flutes. Not those flutes! Uh, and he kind of goes back to the table and he kind of sits himself down and he starts chatting to the Marino sisters again. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Not really knowing like how to end dancing for you. I guess just kind of continues with Age's lead. I don't know if he's continuing dancing. Yeah, what, absolutely. But... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's probably going to lean in so that they can have a conversation if they, you know, if mm. they... Did that way that you kind of dance and talk at these events? Oh yeah. We're on the dance floor. I think as the music changes, I'm Ivan's going to just sort of like awkwardly stop and go, uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Fine. And Thanks. Shake her hand sure. awkwardly. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Bernie. Yes. Yes. Can you take me somewhere else, please? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ivan, you have to buy me dinner. No, first. not that. Not that. <laughs> just not uh, a month. Oh, to the bar. Yes. Yes. Take me to the bar. Thank you. Do you want to come to the bar? Uh, for once, I'm going to say no. Is she all right? <laughs> I just feel very awkward, and I'm just going to, I don't know, is there just like a quiet corner I can like sneak away to, or just like out of the crowd and out on my own for a minute? Antibiotics, I think. <laughs> <laughs> 
closer to where you had come in on the kind of southeastern wall, there's a small corner, and you do see that anybody at the table seems to be at the, at the dance floor, and kind of one or two people is sitting and they're kind of lost in conversation, and then they start making out. Uh, but it's kind of the quietest table. Okay. <laughs> I'll go over there, but I'll, like, very quietly take a chair away so that I'm, like, a couple feet away Oops, from the table. Check, okay. Can I have a dice pack, or is this a... Yeah, it's a dice pack, yeah. Uh, 21. <laughs> you're going to grab the chair, it squeaks, it scrapes, because then you pick it up, you're, and you're now kind of sitting in a dark corner. Perfect. Uh, you can, you can see, from here, you can see everything. Yeah, I think uh, I just want to sit and people watch for a while. There's a... An older looking gentleman uh, sitting kind of two tables away and he's on his own and he's, he just has a, a glass uh, of uh, wine or something and he's just kind of, uh, he's got a finger on kind of the rim of it and he's just kind of tipping it back and forth and the entire time he is kind of looking in your direction, just just making eye contact with you. It's one of the things that I think that person looks familiar and you kind of lose them in the crowd and as you kind of go to turn to where they went or where you thought they went, you see a tiefling woman, bright pink hair, wearing just this jet black mask and this long, almost made out of black smoke dress, just these huge ruffles and tulle just sort of spilling out and she's staring you out of it. And then she disappears into the crowd. I go find her. <laughs> <laughs> It is that thing of like you kind of feel your heart sink a little bit and as you kind of go to stand the gentleman sitting two tables away kind of gets up at the same time. You got to move and he moves towards you. I keep one eye on him but I keep moving towards the table. As you kind of kind of snake through the tables and the chairs and like, it, it is sort of the, the formal stuff is kind of over and people are not kind of spilling mm. out onto uh, their own kind of makeup and setup. You kind of maneuver one way, and he had anticipated you going the other. And as you sort of move into the crowd, you just hear him call out, Hephaestus, and you continue through the crowd. By all means, let us continue to debate and discuss, but we must ensure not to let sentimentality obfuscate our judgment. The removal of King Dreyfus serves a dual purpose, alleviating the suffering of the impoverished, a cause so very close to my heart, but still closer is the power of ambition of our esteemed organization. The needs of the downtrodden and the destitute, while a valid cause, pale in comparison to the influence and authority we seek to wield. This is not a merely strategic maneuver. It is a calculated play to dismantle an old and tiresome regime, creating a void that aligns with the overarching goals of our order. As we cast our votes, let practicality and the pursuit of organizational ambition guide our hands. In the shadows where altruism intertwines with the hunger for power, astute manipulation is the key to achieving our collective aspirations for our beloved Terra. Hence, an unyielding commitment to both alleviating the plight of the impoverished and advancing the ambitions of the Terra, I vote in favor of the King's assassination. As for the son, Kale, Adaris, I believe him a threat. His actions, they do not align themselves with the tarot. I still hold my hanged man card and encourage you all to consider the danger of releasing him from this reading. Ivan and Bernie. That's a lovely duo all the same, isn't it? You don't see many like this anymore. I've, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I thought a man of your standing be at these all the time. Uh, no, not really my cup of soup. Um, Do you drink soup out of a cup? That's a bit weird. 
It's just convenient. Mm. I'll have to try it sometime. <clears throat> yes. And there's a rather large minotaur uh, just sort of standing behind Ivan and he kind of looks at you, Bernie. Do I know? You recognise him as uh, Admiral Barbosa. Jesus, Barbosa, you're just... You get bigger every time I see you. Or maybe I'm getting smaller, huh? Indeed. Could you perhaps introduce me? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan, this is this is Captain Barbosa. Admiral. Admiral, Admiral <laughs> Barbosa. Admiral Bar- Ab- <laughs> I've had a few too many. I'm sorry, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear... <laughs> <laughs> you hear a snickering point behind it, and there's a uh, smaller, sh- just smaller than uh, the Admiral, a young woman standing behind him, and she kind of, she's trying her best not to laugh. What's her name? Uh, you know her as Begonia Barbosa, but she lets to call her Bibi. Oh, Bibi, aren't you looking fabulous? And you are looking like that. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's hot couture and it hold me. <laughs> no, it's, oh, it's... <laughs> Something that you are definitely wearing With a kind of a snort The Admiral kind of just rolls his shoulders Admiral Barbosa uh, Ivan Pleasure Yep I heard of your deeds uh, Okay My compliments Thank you Bibi isn't he very handsome <laughs> Ah, no, it's, he's my date. Get your eyes off him. You would do me the honour of leading my daughter in a dance? Uh, uh, would I? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of nods. Sort of look at Bernie. Ah, go on. Uh, Don't step on his toes. Uh, uh, y- yes. Oh, um... Sure, Daddy. Whatever you say. And she holds a hand out to you, uh, reluctantly. I reluctantly take it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 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 Yeah, I'll I'll lead the way. Well, are you going to ask me to dance, Admiral? No. Ah, go on. You wouldn't leave her out there on her own, unchaperoned. I can see perfectly fine from where I'm standing. Oh, but not everyone can see you seeing them. <laughs> I don't quite understand what you're doing. <laughs> she puts her hands up. <laughs> Come on now, live a little. <laughs> I've lived 48 years. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> I don't quite follow. Well, if you're not going to dance with me, I'm going to find someone who will. Where's the genius? And he just points dance floor and you see that Jamie's Sophia are still uh, locked in arms and dancing. Be ashamed to disturb them all the same, aren't they? Very cute. No. What's, what's your bud's name? Who? The, the other servant guy. Oh, your friend Joachim. She's gonna go find him. Joachim's in the middle of the crowd throwing moves. <laughs> She's gonna join him. Like he's full on like break dancing. Break dancing. <laughs> Amazing. There is even like a cardboard mat that he's brought as well. Via <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and AJ. You're on to your fourth song. Oh. You see that Ivan has kind of been dragged onto the dance floor again, led almost unwillingly by a young Minotaur woman. And just as you kind of acknowledge him, you both see Hephaestus sort of frantically moving from one end of the, the ballroom through the crowd. What are you doing? I suppose we're dancing. Uh, AJ's going to lean in. Sophia and say to her amongst the din of the crowd you know I've you know I've dined in the courts of kings and drank the richest of wines and yet none have been as sweet or as intoxicating as I find you oh wow um I feel I should be honest it's like the very mention of your name goes straight to my head and leaves me swimming in a sea of uncertainty and I want to drown in it. I feel like 
I said I didn't feel anything for you as well. But the last few months for me have been like, I think I've, I've learned and grown more in the last few months than I have in my entire life. And I'm scared. <laughs> Are you scared of, of what we have? Because I, I count myself incredibly blessed that the person you've grown into is the person I met. I've always kept my distance when it came to my feelings before. So this is all a bit new and terrifying to me. Feeling it burning in her pocket. <laughs> Fia reaches in and just in the palm of her hand holds this black and silver ring. My, um, my mom came by and she gave this to me. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, she gave it to my dad at one stage before. Oh. Um. The doors to the ballroom burst open as a small troop of protesters uh, carrying placards make art, not war. Kappa's anvil storm in and just start roaring and shouting. And people are... Like, the musicians stop and people are kind of aghast at uh, what is happening. Uh, and people kind of spill back a little bit and everyone's kind of moved and shuffled. Um, at this moment, uh, Dreyfus kind of looks up, uh, clocks eyes on the marigold, kind of uh, nods at the king and a couple of servants kind of go to usher the protesters out and they are... They're non-violent, but they are trying to make as much of a scene, as much of a commotion as they possibly can. And Hephaestus, in this moment, as kind of the crowd stops kind of moving, you are able to kind of move through everybody a little bit easier. And you just see that pink-haired woman uh, just dip uh, around a corner. And as you follow, you see she kind of turns to stand there and there's just this middle-aged tiefling woman uh, wearing a mask with a wig kind of blended into it. You're a fastidious aren't you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And she kind of leans against the wall. Good to, to meet you. You're much taller in person. Thanks, I guess. Can I get you a drink? Uh, fuck it. Yeah, sure. And she just kind of she moves around to the corner and she just takes a glass from the table uh, and a second one for herself and she holds one out to you. Uh, Hephaestus takes it and immediately starts sipping at it. Jane Knight. Nice to meet you. And she just holds her hand out kind of lazily. She, she, she kind of takes it. She gives it kind of a firm squeeze. I had heard you were a bit of a party monster. Everything Okay. Yeah, look, it's been, you know yourself, quite a busy week. Fought a Dracohydra. A bit tired. It's a bit stuffy. Oh, it's fucking awful. Do you want to maybe just down these and we can find a better party? I give, like, a good look around the room. I, I guess check on the other three and just make sure they're okay. Dreyfus is looking quite vexed. He moves away, like he, Marigold kind of follows after him and one or two servants are also kind of following them. But the party is kind of back into a full swing. No bad vibes, no. People are kind of like, oh, protesters. We do, we do, we do, we do, it's a holiday. Even uh, protesters should take a holiday. And uh, yeah, the vibes are kind of coming back. Yeah, she just kind of turns back and shrugs and downs her glass and goes, fuck it, yeah, and chucks the glass back over her shoulder. <laughs> Oh, um, this way. And she just, <laughs> uh, she kind of takes you by the wrist and she kind of leads you down this much more narrow corridor. You come through a set of double doors and she leads you into a kitchen and you can see a whole plethora of staff kind of getting little cocktail sausages and little cubes of cheese and mm. grapes and little sandwiches um, all kind of like put on trays and uh, little pineapple ringlets and stuff like that all kind of sorted for like little snacks mm. uh, for, for the next round of food. A few people kind of eye the, the pair of you, which she kind of just waves. Um, I swipe the tree on the way through. Oh, excellent. <laughs> she yanks a bottle of champagne out of a, a nice bucket. Uh, well, it'll do. Uh, and you'll plonk. And 
again, she's kind of leading you through these corridors and passageways for staff and servants. You're sure the others are going to be fine? No, they're, they're adults. They're handling themselves, no problem. I know this little spot. It's quite quiet. This could be quite an interesting decision. Maybe, depending on which way it goes. Mm, yes, of course. But I feel more in favor of the more interesting path. Well, if you have a plan, please don't keep it from me, because I'm slightly skeptical about this request. As am I. And more so about who would ask of the Empress's services for such a drastic task. But, nevertheless, I have the seeds of plans already for how we could benefit. If you say so, my love. But the son does make some convincing arguments. He does, doesn't he? Which confuses matters slightly, but ultimately, none of what he said matters. That's a bit harsh. Harsh, perhaps, but nonetheless true. Think of the opportunities, and the people, that would arise after such a drastic change in power. Are you sure nothing will come of us? It's hard to be sure of that, but I would not let anything come upon us. And besides, I trust the Empress's judgement in such matters. As do I. So, are we decided? Yes, I think we are. Then we will see just how interesting the future is, my dear. With the music kind of back in full swing, Afia, AJ? Um, with the commotion, my hand kind of closed up and... Um... I'm going to put my hand on Fia's closed hand and say... I need to get some air. Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, to the gardens? Sure. Okay. And Fia, I... Uh... I'm scared too, but I think if... I need some air. Okay. <laughs> AJ and Fia, you are, again, going out one of those doors on the east that leads out to the, kind of the gardens and the fountains. And there are, there's a few kind of couples and small little gathering of people. What was all that inside? The shouting? I think they played one of those songs that you sing along to. I don't know, I was kind of, we were having a conversation I didn't really notice. Oh, how nouveau. And he kind of leads a young woman kind of in and he's like... I don't even know this song. And he, he just starts singing. Uh, <laughs> and the woman said, I'm very... Ivan, as you are, like, uh, Begonia uh, Barbosa is kind of kind of standing there with you. Kind of, the you had just kind of started to dance. And then with the protest uh, kind of erupting, she's now kind of just swaying back and forth. Uh, do, you, do you want to be here? Or? Absolutely no. Not at all. Not even in the slightest. Daddy made me come. Yeah, well, Bernie made me come, so... I just... I feel so... And she kind of looks at what's uncomfortable. Yeah, I know how you feel. It's like everybody's watching you, and it's just... I can feel everyone's eyes on my back, and I just feel really uncomfortable, and uh, it feels hard to breathe. Are you wearing a corset as well? <laughs> uh, no. No. And she kind of looks over her shoulder. I don't really think... I mean, we don't have to do any of this. Okay. What What do you want to do? I would like to go back home and tend to my gardens. Okay, well, can't really help with that. Nope. But she's just continuing this way. My dad said... You were some great fighter. Not just at the sample, but he's heard things about you. Yeah, I, uh, me and my friends find ourselves getting into trouble quite a bit and having to fight our way out, so. Can I ask you a question? I mean, you already have, but, uh, yeah. Oh, like another question. Yes, yeah. What's the Forgotten Veil? Oh. Uh, it, uh, it, it's where I'm from. I've never heard of it. No. No, you, uh, you, you wouldn't have. Why don't you just go back there? I wish I could. But you can't. No. Because... 
because it's not there anymore. Oh. Something bad? Hmm? Something bad? Y- yeah. I don't know what it's like to lose my home. I lost somebody when I was very young. Um, that's not fun. Your mother? Yeah. Um, so, you haven't heard anything about the war? No. Okay. What? what? No, uh, no, I, no, I just, I, 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 I thought that maybe because, you know, you were one of the great heroes of Gale Shark, maybe you heard, I, I, I it, it doesn't matter. It, it, well, no, you, you might as well tell me, I'm sure. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably hear about it soon enough anyway. You'd be doing as a service. If you want to press Begonia mm-hmm. further, you are going to have to draw from the tower. Ah, uh, yeah, go on. Go on. Why go not? on. Oh my gosh. I just... I overheard my father talking to a Mr. Orin. They said that things between Visage and the kingdom are good. That we could be looking at a war. That's why they're doing all those, you know, the protesters. Mm. I think there's a war coming. Oh, wow. Look, I, I I wouldn't worry about it. Um, you know, we, we the, the king has a very uh, competent army, and you know we have the the heroes. So don't 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 you worry about it. And your and your father, of course. Uh, People die, and she kind of you see just kind of a tear fall down her face. I, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Um, this is the Masks of Winter. Here I am crying about something that's probably not even going to happen. I'm... I think I'm going to get some air. If you'll excuse me. And she kind of just picks up her dress and she kind of moves through the crowd off the dance floor out into the gardens. I turn to see is Joachim still dancing? (laughs) No, he's outside smoking. Um, Okay. There's a couple of people have lined up to take your hand. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta go out to Yoaki. <laughs> um, <I> can't deal. <laughs> feeling a, uh, that sort of, that, that dread, uh, that anxiety of, oh no, another, another dance, another conversation, another pair of eyes. And you, a lot of people are looking and waiting and watching. It kind of gets unbearable. And, only a moment after Begonia excuses herself, you kind of bow very hurriedly at your would-be dance partners, but you scurry off the dance floor when you feel somebody grab your wrist. Well, uh, hello? My dance carriage is open. Brother, son, you urge us to keep our perspective on this read today. And what are we truly considering here? While no one mark is above our attention, is this the end of one man or one kingdom? For the latter will certainly bring change, shift the spotlight of attention to our home, cast our well-loved shadows into light. And how will the work of our major arcana be affected when such a change brings new responsibilities, precautions or scrutiny to our missions? Let us instead remain unfettered by such restraints. And though regardless of how the cards fall today, I will honour or enforce the outcome. The hanged man's vote is cast. The king of Galeshire should live. Hephaestus, you find yourself out in a small kind of loading area, like a kind of, it seems to be like where there's boxes and barrels and all kind of stacked up. Mm. And uh, this woman has sort of uh, moved over and like tipped uh, a barrel down and she's kind of sitting on it. Madame, and she gestures at a crate. This is, yeah, no, this is actually right up a festival's alley. <laughs> um, she does just kind of swish over a little dramatically in the dress and like swishes and sits down on it and just like crosses a leg and looks up at her. So what's a angry looking girl like yourself doing at a party like this? 
I don't know. Have to, I guess. Royal obligations. Yeah. I'm hoping when this is over I can just leave. You see her kind of, the dress that she's wearing, uh, this long black um, tulle dress, she sort of flips a bunch of the fabric to one side and just kind of from her inside thigh down to her knee, you see a long stocking. And on it there's a belt and there are three short knives. Uh, and she just takes one out and she runs it along the rim of the cork. And she gives the bottle a shake. And at that same motion she pops the cork. And the blast of champagne bubbles just fizzes out. Oh, 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 smelling it, smelling it. And she kind of <laughs> immediately kind of goes to drink some of it. Yeah. <laughs> she hands you the bottle. She takes it and just takes a long pull from it. You drink like someone with regrets. If you don't mind me saying. <sighs> regrets a strong word. You want to talk about it? Nah. And she oh just drinks God. a load more. <laughs> oh. I thought I had to ask to be polite. Oh, no. God, no. I just want to get smashed and, I don't know, maybe make out later or something. Oh. If that's what you're into. I don't know. I just you, passed the bottle back. <laughs> well, you play your cards right. Who knows? <laughs> uh, and she takes a swig from the bottle. If you could do anything in the world right now, what would you do? And don't say me. <laughs> <laughs> God, I just get the fuck out of here, you know? Find a little dive bar, get out of this awful dress. Just, yeah, find somewhere quiet. That sounds absolutely killer. Why are you here? You don't seem to be happy. <sighs> it's a work thing. Oh? <sighs> Occasionally, I have to get all doubled up like this, make a show and dance. And she kind of leans in with the, the bottle and she takes another big swig of it. And she is a breath away from your lips and you can smell the champagne and you can, you can smell her perfume. It has this sort of heavy sort of saffron scent from it. And there's a flash of something and you feel a sharp pain in your stomach as she stabs you. The work thing. Can I try to wrestle the blade from her? I guess out of myself. <laughs> yeah, give me a. Uh, Can I back? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we'll roll both. Um, that's okay. a net one. What am I? Strength. Or? Strength. Yeah. Uh, you can add your athletics to it. Does it matter? Okay. Oh my god! It didn't matter. <laughs> How much did you roll? A two! <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter! <laughs> you just feel a sharp pain in your guts as she sticks you with the, the same blade that she used to uncork the champagne with. As she kind of, as you feel the blade and she digs it in deeper, Festa, you see a wicked smile on her face. And as you kind of go to push her off of you, a hand just erupts from the dark and grabs her by the neck as you push her back and you see the older uh, gentleman from the ballroom uh, only a few moments ago has kind of stepped out of a dark kind of corner and he blasts her with shocking grasp. She convulses uh, and as she kind of finds herself pinned between the both of you, I don't pay me enough and she goes to run. Yeah, no, now I think I do Eldritch Blast. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can roll for damage. Oh, uh, five. It's, I think you, she just scarpers and she's running down a laneway. And then if you see kind of t- two tall kind of black gates, you just send out this blast of Eldritch Magic from your hand. Uh, you catch her in the back and she ends up kind of spilling forward, kind of just shoots you just this nasty stare glare back and as she kind of falls forward onto her hands she rolls barrels forward leaps up onto the gate and just throws herself free are you okay Fess is just standing there like holding the wound she's like no no i just got who are you are you and she's like holding her hands up like she's gonna blast again and she's like don't stab me 
I'm not going to stab you. Well, I didn't think she was either. She was clearly paid to kill you. There's probably more amongst the crowd looking at the others. We can stand outside here and we can debate whether I'm going to stab you or not. And though I haven't been paid to do so, if you continue to talk to me in that such manner, I might find the need or urge. Oh my god, can I please get a break? Ow! I'm not a healer. Great. I don't know the wound is too deep. Well, it hurts. She just kind of steals herself and pulls it out. And it's just like, ow! Who are you then? Seven. What the fuck does that mean? Nothing. Kyle <sighs> paid me to protect you. What? His letter. What letter? You received a letter from Kyle Doris, my employer. I did not. That asshole just betrayed us and disappeared. His circumstances, I don't know anything about. His whereabouts are of no concern of mine. His current status, no concern of mine. However, I was paid and given a set of instructions. The instructions were on a letter. I was to protect you, Ivan, and Fia from any harm. There are potentially more of those, and she looks people mingling in the crowd. The wound isn't too deep. You're alive. I suggest you get the letter. What letter? I don't have a letter. I don't have any other information to give you. My instructions only came after. After what? The spell was broken. Could you stop being so cryptic? Oh my god, I'm so tired of this. What spell? What are you even talking about? On his death, his words would be made available to me. Only on that condition. Only then was I to be paid. He's dead? I'm standing here protecting you, am I not? Questionable. Are you dead? I was stabbed. Are you dead? Not yet. Then you were protected. Oh, God. He could have hired someone better. He really couldn't have. Right, whatever about a fucking letter. Can you protect me back into the ballroom where I guess I have to hide because I'm going to get fucking murdered again? We should probably check on the others. Yeah, if you're protecting me, then who's not? They're going to die. What? You kind of like squaring up. You get a better sense of him. He's dressed very sort of... It's all in black, very muted, very simple, plain outfit, long black coat, black shirt, black tie, black pants, black shoes. The only kind of thing that you notice about his appearance is that his upper lip is, there's a very, very deep scar. And he has just these sort of muted golden eyes that kind of look out at you. But his expression the entire time has been very much closed off. Mm. He gestures to the doorway. I walk past him, but I, like, scoot sideways so I can watch him because I don't quite trust him. And then when I get past him, I'm like, stay, like, four feet behind me. Because if I feel you get too close to me, I'm blasting. Or you'll bleed on my shoes. Yeah, well, I don't think you'd like that. Those are nice shoes. As you sort of meander back through the corridors and into the kitchen, you have a thought, a memory. When you woke up, in the Temple of Nan, there was a slip of paper in your hand. That's in your room somewhere. Is that the letter that he was talking about? Dear students, esteemed faculty, I propose a 60% slash in the necromantic school's budget only because the dead are boring, and I think the college cafeteria should extend Tater Tuesdays wrong Oh, wrong. I uh, I beg your pardon. This is the wrong speech. I had a different crowd. Mm, no, where was I? Uh, yes. Um, okay, so I vote to kill... No, wait, that's the end of the thing. Unless you want to get to the start of it, or... Um, 
Anyway, no, never mind. Um, <clears throat> dear students, this is an important occasion in the history of our clandestine organization. The very fabric of fate is weaving its complex threads, and it's so very pretty. We are changed. Um, no, what's that say? Charged. Oh, I'm sorry. We are charged with making a critical choice that can alter the course of destiny in Gilshire, and that sounds fun, maybe. Um, I, Prissipatia Hundervelm, your magician, appears before you as a humble and modest, very modest, practitioner of the forbidden sciences that fluctuate between unreality and reality. Um, gosh, that sounds really smart, actually. Our exchange today expands beyond politics and delves into the intricate web of probability and the magical dance that compels our universe and oh my gods i hope somebody is writing this down um empress high priestess hind man um no all right secret organization <laughs> my bad um anyway king defras the sovereign ruler of gilshire occupies a nexus between destiny and the likely tarot cards we hold in our hands his fate is bound by unseen forces that govern our realm, but if you would be so kind as to permit me to shine the light of a measured in in what's that say? Inevitability along the path we walk. For I have seen the future and it is a doozy. Through the veils of divination, I have unraveled the probabilities that surround the lifeblood of Gilshire, King Defras. The arcane equations all converge upon a singular point in the astral realm, where probability of his demise becomes a beacon of mathematical certainty. No, wait, let me double check that. Can I read one? Uh, divide by two, three quarters. Uh, add pi. I want some pi. Um, yes. Yes! No, I am definitely right. I submit to you this theorem of transcendental consequence. The removal of King Bayfris from the chessboard of fate is a necessary perpetuation of the equilibrium of realms. He is also terrible at chess. Dragon chess. The man cheats. He's a monster, a criminal. The arcane probabilities, like obedient servants, beckon us to usher in a new epoch where our influence shapes the narrative of Gilshire. Consider the potentials, fellow members of the Tarot, and observe the convergence of our secret sciences with celestial forces. As we cast our votes, remember all of those smart things I said. I'm 94% certain. Um, does anybody hear this? Does anybody hear that? It's like a humming sound. No, no, just me. Um, Hindman? No? Okay, he's gone. Yeah, so, the speech. Um, okay. Let our choice be recorded in history as the one determined by the rhythm of the arcane, spun within the mysterious probabilities and sung for chaos. I vote for Defries to die by the hand of the Taro. My gods, it's very dramatic. I hope he won't be mad, but we should leave a note that it's for the sake of arcane science. No. Hang on that. That flies in the face of being a shadow organization, too. Anyway, um, I'm sure in the afterlife he can learn how to play dragon chess properly without cheating, like the cheating tyrant he is. Um, that's not my reason, by the way, for wanting his death. I'm not a sore loser. Um, don't look, don't look at me like that. Justice, stop it. Anyway, that's my speech. Hater Thursday, consider it. AJ and Fia out on the, the eastern gardens uh, and the fountains there's a kind of a there is kind of a crowd around you um, people are kind of like they just want to talk to you they just want to kind of engage your company and a small group of those uh, you recognize them AJ they are wardens of the temple of Rome. they are kind of taken in uh, in the same way that you were so how many years exactly does it take to be a night scout? Well, it depends on on the night scout. Um, usually, the academy program is is six. Um, you you can do it in four. At the same time, I'm going to open up a telepathic link with fear. 
So I'd be 12 if I joined right now. I'd be the youngest Knights character in history. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, you would be if you if you got in at 12. They don't usually accept you in so young. Um, but if you are part of the junior Night Scouts, uh, it can oh, be... Oh, a- those lamos. Oh. Little kid, um, where are the brothers and sisters of the Temple of Rogue? <laughs> They're currently inside trying to keep Reedy's clothes on. Yeah, that does take more effort. Um, if you want to get into the Night Scouts, um, write me a letter, address it to Ajalia Steele, and send it to the pass. And I will, on the morrow, let you know the steps I took. The steps you took. And it kind of walks right behind you. Okay, on the morrow. What the hell is Fee, I'm so sorry. Um, How did you get your hair to do that? Like, I, I think that would really suit me, Fia. Like, that little braid thing. That's, that's very sort of rustic. Thank you. Um, just trial and error and practice. Oh, and the colour. Oh, that's my natural hair. And then, like, she immediately would ah. get this, this uh, again, a, a Shader Kai elf, uh, just kind of jet purple hair. It kind of leans in and she's kind of like, she's kind of mashed her hair. And she's, yeah, I think this would really go with me. I've been doing this whole grape thing, but I just think dated. Yeah, I, I don't have, to, like, mine's a natural hair colour that I have never dyed it. Oh, aren't you just so lucky? <laughs> Thank you. Now you can come with me. I mean, it's ter- it's you're just perfect already. You know, I don't see why you'd need to change anything. Best friends, besties. Um, if I you wouldn't mind, would you excuse us for a moment? If you wouldn't mind. Um, I'm, 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 I mean yourselves. I need to talk to to AJ for a moment. Oh, oh, uh, oh! Uh, of course, you have things to talk about. Excuse us, and I. They're totally gonna kiss. I pull his hand and like leg it. <laughs> taking AJ by the, the arm, you kind of just lead him deeper into the gardens. And you find yourself sort of coming around the eastern wing of the palace. And there are one of the two kind of walled gardens here. There were an anniversary gift from Dreyfus to Drusilla. And there is a sort of a pathway that you can you can follow and you can walk through the gardens. Uh, you don't see many people milling about. They're a little bit too far away from the centre of the party there's one or two guards kind of patrolling kind of just nod at the both of you but they don't seem to stop you at all okay I just go somewhere where like I don't know if there's a bench or something you again just seeing a space that the both of you might have a private moment you lead AJ into the walled gardens okay Ivan very soft uh, hand has kind of just gently taken you by the wrist you kind of turning on your heel to face uh, your prospective dance partner. Standing there, you feel your heart just pound in your chest. It's Adana. Long, black as the night sky here. Pale, soft skin. These swirling oceans for eyes. And she just smiles at you. What, what, what are you doing here? I'm looking for a dance. Where, where, where have you been? I've missed you. We can talk about all of that afterwards. But please, can I have this dance? Of, of course. And she kind of pulls you in. Everything starts to like melt away. All the eyes that Ivan felt bearing down on top of him start to like melt away. And I think at this point he's not even sure if he's awake. <laughs> if like what's happening right now is even real. It doesn't feel real. We haven't danced like this. You came back and I haven't been able to. And she kind of just buries her head into your shoulder. Haven't been able to what? Hold you like this. And you feel her weight kind of press on you. 
I put my arms around her and I hold her close. I thought we would have the chance. We do. We have to. And she kind of like leans away from you for a moment. You've always been... You've always just been exactly what I needed. Uh, I'm, I'm here. What do, what do you need? I just need you to tell me that you love me. <laughs> of course I do. I love you. It doesn't sound the same. Of, co- of course you love me. I love you. I... I'm sorry, I feel like, like I can't do this again. What, what are you talking about? He's coming back. He's back. And I have to stop him. You will. We, we will. She places her hand on your face. No. We won't. What are you saying? I'm saying, Ivan, you've done right by love. And she kisses you. And you just feel an energy course through you. It's it's a hundred thousand butterflies in your stomach. It's fireworks. It is the plunging into a cold sea. It is spinning in the dark. It is joy and elation and it is pain and it is sadness. And for a moment, you see yourself as if as if you've been kind of moved out of your body. Looking down You see yourself on the dance floor and there's just an empty space. People have kind of cleared a circle around you. You don't see Hedonna. Everybody is just watching, staring. And you feel air rush back in and everything is spinning and you see Hephaestus kind of running up at you and there's a man next to her and she's saying something and she's holding her stomach and she's shouting at you and she's shaking you by the shoulders I have in the past been accused of sitting on the fence of hesitating to act on important matters but as the justice my job is not to act rashly but to be the calibrator of the scales Scales which take only a slight weight on one side or the other before everything falls out of balance. It may not surprise you all that my first inclination was to say no. Who are we to choose if an individual should live or die? But a king is so much more than an individual. A king is a symbol of stability, yes, but also of a rigged system. A symbol of legitimacy which can empower justice through the state, and yet also a symbol of elite control by the few over the many, so perhaps I should vote yes. Of course, weighing options is never easy. This king, the King of Gaelshire, is middle of the road. He listens to his advisers, employs a council and makes few waves amongst the people he rules. I wonder, would the common folk even recognise him without his crown? And for all the flaws of the system, it may be more stable than revolution. If his death means the end of the treaty between Gaelshire and Visage, and the exchange of a peaceful regime for revolt and bloodshed, would it be better to stick with the status quo? In the course of history, what creates the most unbalance? A ripple of change, the stagnation of the pond, or the rock that forces the water to flow around it? To be just, and to be the justice, is to find balance and consider both sides. I have considered, and the scales are unfairly weighted. I cast my vote and say yes, we should kill the king. Give me a pull on the tower to stay in this moment. I have my eyes on that piece for something. (laughs) You kind of snap to your senses, Hephaestus, kind of just 
slaps you. Uh, it is just a full slap, and her hand is wet and warm, and that blood. Um, and there is, there's a kind of a taste of blood in your mouth. After I slap him, I just kind of like grab him by the collar and pull him down to me because I don't want. I know I'm making a, a scene, but I don't want to make a scene. Mm. <laughs> so I just kind of lean into his ear, and I'm just like, I just got stabbed. A, can you help? B, there are people here after us. Uh, um, uh, yes, uh, I. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and I, I put my where, where? Where are you stabbed? I what, just grab his hand and like put it right over the wound. Okay. And I use lay on hands and heal the wound. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh god, that always feels weird. Okay. Uh, right. Um, this guy is. What was your name, sir? He's just standing four feet away from you. Right. Okay. This guy uh, was paid to protect us by. Kyle, I don't know. Don't worry about that right now. I'm just trying not to get stabbed again. Apparently there's people here who want to stab us. One of them already did. Where are Fia and AJ? Oh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Okay, great. Okay. Should we tell the king? Should we handle this ourselves? I don't really... Uh, 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 Bernie. 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 <laughs> She'll definitely fix yeah. this one for us. <laughs> Uh, can I spot Bernie anywhere? You see Bernie back at the bar with a bunch of servers all doing shots. Nice. God, I don't know if this is going to be helpful. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just cut through the crowd straight to her and I Seven kinda... follows again, keeping at the four feet, four feet <laughs> distance. Perfect. As, as do I. <laughs> um, I come up to her and again, trying to be cool about it I just kind of throw an arm over her shoulder and pull her in and I go hey Bernie yes fuck <laughs> come on and she just puts one like shoves one into your hands okay yeah and I do it real fast and then I turn back to her <laughs> okay I, I need to tell you something and I need you to not panic okay I'm I'm cool as a cucumber great I just got stabbed what <laughs> I just like <laughs> slam a hand over her mouth <laughs> and yeah, I look I at the people she's so. hanging out with I'm just like <laughs> and I go yeah. back to whispering <laughs> Shh, relax. Yeah? Okay. okay. I'm fine. It's fine. What? It's not the first time. It's not the last time. It's fine. Um, We might be under attack. By who? I'm not sure, but this weird, mysterious guy in black said we are. She looks four feet away. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a... An older high elf kind of descent. So he is protecting me, and that's great, but there's four of us. Do you know where Fia and... AJ went. Yeah, they're on the dance floor. Oh, no. Well, I'm not sure, but I would say they're around here somewhere. Okay. 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 Um, if you wanted to be alone with someone, where would you go? I don't know. I don't. Uh, this is not my palace. Where are places to hide? Would she know? You know about three dozen places that you can go for a kiss <laughs> and a <laughs> The closest proximity. Around Kitchens. the core shed, making out. <laughs> <laughs> They're under the bleachers. <laughs> Off the top of your head, for right now, there's probably, like, there are servants' quarters that you could slip down. Hefesta, there's hundreds of places there could be. Do you, do you know any, like, telepathic spells you could call her with? I, AJ has one. Well, that's helpful. I, I mean, let's just think for a second. If we were two really awkward, weird people... <laughs> And we wanted to awkwardly be awkward together. <laughs> All accurate. Uh, I mean... A library. Uh, no. No, because they'd be too weird and awkward. Uh, 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 outside, maybe? Outside, away from people looking at them and saying... Oh, there's a few dark people. corners in the garden. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Not that I'd know. Right, no, that's that's fine. We're not judging. One of the servers elbows you. <laughs> shut, up, shut up, you will see you later. <laughs> Fia would it's romantic isn't it yeah that's that's just gross enough for them isn't it garden walking yeah, night under roses the they do each other roses shit yeah uh, yeah, yeah. to the garden <laughs> you're going to go looking for Fia and AJ mm-hmm. you are going to pull on the tower okay <laughs> oh Jesus dear illustrious arcana my trusted ones. The proposition before us is one that I find 
intriguing. Yes, there could be war. Yes, there would be panic. And yes, there will be fear. But I believe most of all there will be change, and from that change comes growth. Much like the celestial body I represent, I myself am ever-changing and feel this world has become too... complacent. I do not sit in these hallowed halls hallowed because we are joined here. I designed to think that we, as skilled as we are, are incapable of change. And this, the death of the ruler of a nation, would be the greatest change. Not only a grand opportunity for us, as our Empress has stated, but also for Kaleshire and Visage. What better way to bolster the blending of two nations than by bringing one of them to heal? The death of the king will be a tragic loss, as is the loss of any life, for a time. But the things we could do with that power behind us will greatly outweigh the sorrow felt from his untimely demise. I, the moon, cast my vote. The King of Galeshire should die. The pair of you with Bernie and Seven yeah. following four feet behind uh, head out into the garden and fountains and immediately people kind of like brush up to you. There's a shader guy off with like deep purple hair. Oh my god, I absolutely love your dress. That is just stunning. Yeah, great, thanks. Uh, excuse me. And I just kind of like Use both hands and give her a little shove to the side. Rude. Why can't you be more like Fia? Have you seen Fia? Oh, I've seen Fia. Where is she? Well, it's a bit private. We're outside. I just don't know if I should tell you. Um, herself and AJ have gone off for a bit of alone time. Yeah, where? This is important royal business. I think I saw them... And she kind of like puts a finger up to her face. Bernie, as the representative of the royal people and our handler, uh, you need to put this woman into the dungeons for obstruction of heroism. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> mm, no, I don't really feel like. She's going to pull out her sword and put it in the back of her knee and say, "Come with me." <laughs> and press gently. Is this? Is this... Show us where they went, or uh, you're going to the dungeon. I've already been to the dungeon. It's really boring. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks at you. I think I saw them going to the gardens. And she points to the east. Great, thanks. And I like yeah, shoulder you're welcome. as I walk past. You're all kind of running uh, and racing. All of you give me perception checks. Two. Wow, Barry's real perceptive. 13. <laughs> Natural one. Your head is absolutely swimming, Ivan, and... This information, this, uh, we're under attack. It, you kind of, it's a thing of you, 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 you just can't take any more of it. And you watch as Bernie, Festa, and that weird old man just kind of continue running uh, through uh, towards the eastern side of the palace. And as you kind of just stop, it's just breathe and. What the hell was that about? Did Hedonna just break up with me? As in the hubbub of Bernie, Seven, Festa, and I uh, going to look for AJ and Fia, I'm going to go towards, back to the headquarters, our rooms, towards that. Your feet are moving without you kind of realising it. And you can't see the others anymore. You kind of look around and you're not quite sure where in the palace you are. It's only when you kind of look up, you can kind of see uh, the residence quarters. You're close to your rooms and there's a light on in the common room. And you can see somebody moving around. Tarot members, our decision transcends borders. 
I am the Tower, a proud soldier of the Empire of Ijaj. I speak now with the precision of a seasoned warrior. King Dreyfus, ruler of Galesha, his life teeters on the edge of a verdict. My allegiance to the Tarot mandates a blunt assessment. A war between the Empire of Ijaj and Galeshire is imminent. Removing the king would mean the war would be short and brutal, but ultimately, lives will be spared. I've led soldiers through countless battles, witnessed the toll of conflict. The Empress of Ijaj, my homeland's supreme ruler, remains in my thoughts and concerns, but duty to the tarot supersedes all. My vote echoes with military command. Remove King Dreyfus. Tactical necessity dictates this choice. Nothing else. As for the sun, I acknowledge the disparate loyalties within our secretive enclave. It's the very nature of our organization. Trust is earned and never to be misplaced. Personal animosities fester among tarot members stemming from past behaviors. I feel his position is compromised too. He failed to carry out his mission. So I join Temperance and I raise my hangman card. He cannot be allowed to leave here with our secrets. Not again. Hephaestus, Bernie, and Seven, you find yourself standing outside the entrance to the eastern Walled garden, and you don't see anybody around. You can kind of hear some music still kind of wafting in the background coming from the, the ballroom, but you don't see anybody. And as you step in through the walled garden, a chill just kind of comes over the three of you, and Seven kind of takes you by the arm. Festa. What? There's one of them near. Okay, so we need to find Fia and AJ. Where's the... Any kind of gestures back? Ivan. Oh, fuck! I... Did you see him go, Bernie? Did you... Who? Ivan. He was directing... Should I look for him? We, we can't keep splitting up. I can't keep losing these people. I... Right, we'll find, we'll find them first and then we'll go look for Ivan. I'm sure they're in here somewhere. Fia! Fia! I, I just started doing the same. I just, I'm just shouting, Fia, AJ! AJ! Fia and AJ, you've been kind of walking for quite some time through the gardens. It's not quite a hedgerow maze, but there are parts of it that when you get to the end, you find it's a, it's a little bench to sit down at, or there's a little fountain, and there's all these sort of statues and pieces kind of on display with little plaques on what everything is, who donated it, who sculpted it, and whose likenesses it made, so on and so forth. A pair of you have just been kind of walking kind of aimlessly through this when you find yourselves deep into the heart of the walled gardens and you know exactly kind of where you are, AJ, at this moment in time. This is, um, the gardens themselves were actually gifts to Queen Drusilla um, and the king and queen used to come here to get away from it all. So I thought you might. This Take way. a seat. Shh, 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 shh. Okay. I need to think. And then I just. Fia paces back and forth in front of you quietly for a little bit. And then she turns to you, but she doesn't look at you. So, what I was saying earlier. Like. Yeah, I've grown a lot. I've learned a lot. Being on my own has been great. Um, and I met some great people and I care about them a lot. I'm scared because everyone who I care about get, eventually gets hurt. Nate got hurt. Hephaestus got hurt. Hod died because of me. I don't want that to happen to you. V, I'm scared for the same reasons. Uh, my whole life has been protecting people. And when it comes to you, if I went to a cleric, they'd say I was cursed. 
but if I am, it's a curse I never want lifted. I'm scared of losing you. You make me quiver. But a quiver is also where I find my strength. So I'll be your quiver if you'll be mine. At this moment, uh, the little adjustment I made to my outfit earlier was to slot my bow in behind when I heard it was a trap. I'm just going to touch my bow and cast True Sight. So when I say these things, I'm looking truly at Fia, the shadow creature thing that I saw in the Colosseum or the Simple. Not that Fia knows, but... You, looking at her directly, that presence, that shadow it's almost swallowing her entirely it's growing Fee, I've done something and I don't know if it's smart but I know that it's right and last night when I asked did you trust me and you said yes it gave me the courage to do this I've what Misty was referring to earlier was that I went to the Gazette and I told them all about my dreams and what I've done and what the kingdom has done. And tomorrow or the next day, the consequence of that action will come to me. So if all we have is tonight, then let's make a count. We, the High Arcana, should not meddle with the politics of the land it is beneath us a waste of our time the assassination of this king will only bring upon more strife that we will then have to deal with in future the fact that anyone is considering it it makes me feel frustrated that you believe that tossing away a life is within our remit that a life so insignificant should be on our radar. I make no secret that I think this vote is a massive waste of our time. Ivan, you moving up through the stairs towards the common room, down along the corridor, you see the doors are shut, but there is a commotion inside. Somebody is moving around quite quickly inside. Uh, do I have my weapon on me? Uh, you have no weapons on you. Nothing. No. Yeah, I, 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 I move towards... Which room did you say it was in? The common they, room. You're, the you're common gone. Room. Yeah, whatever yeah. This, this thing is. Okay. Um, and there's nothing around me that I can use at all? N- not out in the corridor. Yeah. Uh, like any of your belongings are inside your room beyond the common area. Okay. So I will, yeah, I'll just head on in and... Two things occur to you at that exact moment. Whatever noise you heard stops as soon as the door rattles. And the other thing is the common area is in an absolute mess. All the doors to the rooms are open. Your belongings, all of your belongings are just flung around the room. You don't see anybody. I... Like, can I investigate the mess around me and see kind of, you know, if I if I spot anything, you know? Yeah, give me an investigation check. Yeah. Um, six. It, it it's just a mess. Like your stuff is there. Some of Fia's stuff. What little AJ had brought with him to the palace is there. A lot of, not a lot of Hephaestus stuff. Okay. Um. I think first I want to run to my room and get my rapier. You just sort of beeline for your bedroom. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the door shuts behind you. I turn to the door. There's a lock. Okay, I got got to find my stuff. Again, it's scattered all over the place. Your, like, all your gold is there. Like, Fia's diary has been torn to pieces. The pages are scattered all over the place. Uh, You find your rapier. Okay, I, uh, I'm i going to attack the door, thunder a smite, and try okay. and blow its splinters. I won't even make a roll for it. Oh. Um, it's just going to be a thing that happens. You, 
I assume that's why you went for your weapons. Yeah. You turn and immediately you just slash at the door. There's an explosion of thunder. Uh, and the door is blown off uh, its hinges. Uh, it is sent flying forward. It hits something. Mm. And when it does, you just, you hear somebody or something roll forward and a load of paper just gets scattered up into the air. You hear footsteps running for the door and out. Can I roll a perception to see if I can follow that? Because I'm assuming I can't see something, but I can hear it. Yeah. So can, me, I, can I try to follow whatever that is? Yeah, give me a perception check. Oh, fucking 23. Nice. It's not so... You, you're kind of distracted by uh, the things that are kind of sent flying up into the air. For the faintest of moments, you have a... It's one of those things where everything kind of slows and you just see kind of light bend and there's a form in the room that kind of seeing what it had snatched spill upwards. It turns and it kind of reaches up and you can just make out the small frame of a kobold reaching up for the papers that are up in the air. You can now pull from the Dread Tower. Okay, we did it. <laughs> You have a, that split moment where you can, uh, you react, and you, you're not quite sure. It, it all happens so quickly. You reach for the figure where you see them. They scuttle and scurry. They literally do everything they can to try and get out of your grasp. And where you grab, you have found this. The creature, the person, runs. They, they book it, but you... Whatever they were reaching for, whatever they had found, you have managed to grab some of it. Can I open this? Yes, you can. Dearest Jarling Hephaesta, and then that's crossed out, and then it says Hefi. If the words on this page appear, then that means the magic in them used to keep them hidden has faded, and not to be overly dramatic about it, but that's because I've died and not because I botched up the spell. I sincerely hope, which is weird to say because I'm dead, but nevertheless that you can read this both consciously and cognitively, that you wake up from your nightmare and you are safe and well. For reasons I can't divulge too much of past, mostly because let's keep the mystery alive, but I can tell you that while I was originally employed to find you and sow discontent amongst you and the others, I found myself making a friend and those are few and far between in my line of work. I'm not going to apologize for the deception. Just do a shot, punch a table, Ivan, and get over it. Do that right now. I will wait. Great. Now that that's out of the way, you need to get the others away. You need to get a, get them out of the city and far away from Sebastian Marigold and the King and AJ. You are all in serious danger. Something is coming. I tried to stop at Hephaestus. I really tried. I failed. Not only did I fail, but I let the mask slip and someone I work with found out. They know I went digging. They know what I managed to uncover and I crossed the line I thought I never would. Maybe it was curiosity. Maybe it was because I knew I'd get caught. Maybe I was just sick of doing the work for them. There is an organization they call, we call ourselves the Tarot. We make things happen, tip the balance, move the pieces, make kings, and you know what, just pick an analogy about powerful shady organizations and that will do. I'm not the only member you've met. Una Isidrum, Fia's mother, she is the Empress. We've been called together to the city to decide on the fate of Dreyfus. Absolute kilf, by the, by the way. <laughs> I don't have much time left. You can't stop them, so run. Get as far away as possible. Don't trust anyone, especially AJ. He is that. As you stand there with the part of the letter, Kyle left for Avesta, Ivan, your head swims. And there's a faint knock on the door. And standing there, rather confused and disheveled looking, you see a young satyr woman. Oh my gods, you have no idea how long I've been looking for you. She just runs in and jumps into a hug. Oh, uh. Nate, everything's gone wrong. Who are you? You're, you're kidding, right? It's me, Clodagh. 
Oh, uh, um, okay. Uh, I'm not Nate. <laughs> a good one. Yeah, I saw the, the Ivan bit. It's pretty, pretty funny. I, I, yeah. What do you mean? What do you... Nate is... How do I say this? Dead. Her face just drops. <laughs> That's not funny. Look, I'm not looking for anything from you except your help. Like, I, we need the others as well. Oh, God, the others. Okay, uh, we, 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 have to, we have to go. Um, we have to get a Festa, AJ, and we have to get... Who's AJ? Uh, Fia. Don't know. <laughs> we we don't have time for this. I grab her hand and I run. You you take her by the hand and there's a familiarity. Your hand fits hers almost perfectly. And you can see her standing on the docks in a summer dress, alone and heartbroken. You did that. I stop and I look back and I say, Cloda? Yeah! It's me. (laughs) It's so great to see you again. Likewise. I'm going for a hug. Everything comes back to you. The funeral. The wake. She left. She didn't say anything. Why would she? You broke her heart, Nate. As you kind of shake the thought, no, no, I'm Ivan. Uh, and as you struggle that memory away, moving back down the corridor to run stairs and out back out into the courtyards Bernie and Tefesta shouting for AJ and Fia you uh, are again you're kind of getting lost in the uh, and Bernie never comes out here so she doesn't clue where she's going and there's no response from AJ or Fia she's frozen he stands up to step closer to her and leans in to first touch the shadow around her and just try push it out of her and tilts his head a little bit and leans in for a kiss. She accepts it. I'm going to need the pair of you to draw from the tower. Both of them? Shit. AJ, as you pull Fia closer and Fia, you feel your whole body shaking until you find yourself in AJ's arms and the pair of you can both, in that moment, loudly and clearly hear your hearts beating, almost in sync, fast, loud, and when your lips meet, There is this just absolutely, for the longest second of both of your lives, the whole world falls away. You both feel complete. And everything goes quiet. Everything goes still. And as the pair of you kind of just pull back from that moment, looking at each other, AJ, you see that darkness. It's spreading. It's kind of pulling you in. I, because I don't know any better, uh, accept its embrace. Because I think it's fear. You feel AJ just wrap his arms around you and pull you tight into a hug. Yeah. I'm just lost in this moment with him. 
you feel the whole world fall away. You feel yourself slipping, falling. And again, in your hands, you feel fear vanish. Is there anything? There's nothing in front of me anymore? She didn't give it to you. Who is talking? And emerging from a cloud of purple smoke is Una Isidrum. She didn't. That stupid girl! And she just drives a blade into your guts, AJ. And she runs. Thea, you just sort of feeling kind of the world slip away and kind of letting yourself lose yourself in that moment. You feel magic well up around you. It's it's exactly like what it says it is in the books. And then then it spins violently out of control and you feel it pulling and snagging and ripping and tearing at you and it is terrifying and for the faintest of moments as you open your eyes and you just see this swirling mass of black and you just see Una ripped away there's a scream and you are standing over the body of King Dreyfus blood on your hands and Marigold is lying there, screaming your name. Guards! She's killed the king! And we leave the season there. I'm going to do my best to try and keep this short. You've been listening to Romancing the Dungeon, season two finale. As always, a big thank you to my players, Sam, Amber, Louise, Ben, Eilish, and for our final episode, James. I want to quickly make mention of some amazing folk from our community. The Red Blur, Garnet Rose, Philippa Mort, Excato, Melissa, Trepans, Tread Softly, Hecate's Lament, Grey and Locrian, Sed Snow, and Zeki. Without you, we wouldn't have our major arcana and the tarot wouldn't have found their voices. Thank you so much for helping to orchestrate the events as you've heard them. A big thank you to Ghost of Red Mountain for our theme song Haunted, title card and artwork by Ralph is Redacted. We are D8 Dungeon, a group of Irish tabletop role-playing game enthusiasts who love telling stories and sharing them with people. If that sounds like your cup of tea, then check us out on social media. You can head on over to our Discord server. And I would like to cordially invite you to a very special event on the 5th of January on our Discord server, where the cast and myself will be on hand to discuss all the events in Season 2. This has been an absolute blast to get to write and play and see the story take so much life and see so many people get so invested in it. I hope... I hope you enjoyed uh, season two and I promise you that we are just as excited for season three and for what is coming. From me, your dungeon master here at D8 Dungeon, I just want to wish you a very happy and safe new year and I hope that heading into 2024 we'll get to share more of our stories with you and hopefully collaborate and get to do amazing things. Until then, take care.